Is this your first public library of Bookline to go program? Here's how it works. Each month, the library is offering new take home program kits, complete with everything you need to follow along and video or written instructions created by one of your local librarians. The best part? Absolutely no due dates. You can keep everything included in your kit. Visit brklib.com slash to go for a full list of our current kit offerings and follow the link there or visit brklib.com slash eventbrite to reserve yours for free pickup at any library location. Now let's get crafting. Hi! Hello friends! My name is Miss Caroline. I am the children's librarian at the Coolidge Corner Library in Brookline, and I am so happy that you have chosen to join me today for this special Craft Along Junior video. If you signed up for your Craft Along Junior kit, um, please have that with you as we go through this video. If you did not manage to get the kit in time, or if you simply prefer to use the materials in your own home, that is totally okay and thank you for joining us. If you do have your kit, why don't we open it up right now? So first, you are going to find a special packing list that shows all of the materials that you have inside of your kit so that you can make sure nothing is missing. four pieces of construction paper. One of them will be in a fun color and the other three will be light. One spool of colored yarn and one plastic needle. You are also, in order to do this craft, going to need a pen or a pencil and a pair of scissors along with, an, with a responsible adult to use them. All right, fantastic friends. So those of you who do have kits from the library will notice that my pieces of paper are much smaller than yours. That is totally okay. The pieces of paper that you received with your kit are extra big so that you can have enough materials to make extra journals once you have learned how to make them with this craft along video. Your pieces of paper have probably arrived rolled up just like this. If they have been rolled up for a long time, they may still be curly when you unroll them like this. It'll be much easier to do this craft when your paper is flat. A quick tip for how to flatten out your curled up paper quickly is to roll them in the opposite direction that you received them. So if you received them, Like this. What you want to do is unroll them and then roll them back like this. Put a rubber band or a piece of string around them and leave it for maybe an hour and then your piece of paper should be pretty flat. That's a quick tip for how to flatten out curled up paper. Fantastic. So why don't we get started? I'm going to show you my work surface. The first thing you're going to want to do with your extra large pieces of paper is cut them in half. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that with my smaller pieces of paper. And remember that you can keep folding your piece of paper in half to make as many tiny pieces of paper as you would like. It all 
all depends on how large you want your final journal to be. Remember that your final journal will always be half of the size of the piece of paper when it, was, when it is laying flat. So for example, if I made a journal out of this piece of paper right now, it would end up at the end of the craft being this large. All right, now this is much larger than I want my finished book to be. So what I'm going to do is keep this fold right here and then I'm going to open the pages up. You can do the same. You will notice that you have made a line down the middle of your pieces of paper with two equal halves on each side. What you're going to want to do is get your scissors and your responsible adult if you need some help cutting and cut down that invisible line that you have just made. All right, so I have now cut that piece of paper, those pieces of paper in half. And I have two sets of materials for journals that will each be, do you remember? They will each be half of this size when the project is complete. So this journal will end up being this big at the very end. And I think this is the perfect size. So we are going to get started with this. Feel free to cut your piece of paper in as many halves as you want until you get to the size that you want your final journal to be, keeping in mind that the final journal will always be half as big as the sheet of paper. Right? And that makes sense because you have a front and a back and you have to fold them together to make a book. All right, fantastic friends. So what we're going to do, I have my small book here. I'm going to show you a tip. We are going to get our packing list right here and put it in the middle of our book. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw three dots on our packing list. You can space them out as far or as close to each other as you would like. I'm going to try to do it a little bit evenly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that one edge of this packing sheet is lined up with the edge of the bottom of my journal. Okay. So I'm going to draw a dot right here on my packing sheet, a dot right here on my packing sheet, and a dot right here on my packing sheet. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, you see there's this invisible line here that I have folded into my pieces of paper. I'm going to line up my packing sheet with the bottom of the journal right there. And I'm going to draw a line on my journal crease where this first dot is. Then I'm going to draw another line on this crease where the second dot is. And then I'm going to draw another line on this journal crease where the third dot is. Fantastic. So now we have those dots right here on our journal pages. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to do the same thing on the next sheet of paper where there's a dot on this sheet. I'm going to draw a dot on the middle of my page right in that crease that I folded. Then where there's a second dot right here, I'm going to make another dot in the crease in the middle of my journal page. 
And where the third dot is, I'm going to make another dot in the crease that I folded into my journal page. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the next page of my journal. One, two, three. And then again on the cover of my journal. One, two, three. Perfect. And so, because we used the same dots on our ruler here to measure on this sheet of paper and this sheet of paper, this sheet of paper, and this sheet of paper, we know that they're all going to be the same measurements. Fantastic. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our responsible adult again, and we're going to ask them to make a tiny snip where each of those dots fall on each of our pieces of paper. Okay, so let's do that now. And we are just going to make the tiniest, tiniest of snips. Here we go. All right. So now we'll put all of the pieces back on top of each other, making sure that all of the bottoms are lined up with all of the tops and we are going to get our needle and our sparkly thread. So what you're going to do is you are going to unspool your thread. You don't need to do it all the way because there is a lot of thread on there for all of the journals that you're going to make, but it is um, wise to unspool it just a little bit so you have some room to work with. Then you're going to wind the thread through the hole in your extra big needle. If you have trouble doing this on your own, you can always ask your responsible um, adult who helps you with scissors to also help you with threading your needle. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your needle and find the middle dot the middle dot in your journal. And you are going to push your needle through that middle dot. And because we use the same measurement for all of the pages, your needle is going to easily go through those snips that you or your adult made in your paper. Now, having gone through, you're going to go and find the little snip in the top of your journal and push the needle through there and pull it, pull it tight. Perfect. Then you are going to take your needle, skip over the middle dot and push it through the dot at the other end. so that you have something like this. Then on the back, you're going to take your needle, you're going to find the middle hole and push the needle back through that, through there. Excellent, so it looks like this on the back, extra sparkly. And in the middle, you have both of your pieces, your ends of your yarn going through the same, the same hole. Now here's the part where it might seem a little complicated. What you want to do is have one of your thread ends going through here, have one of your thread ends on one side of this piece of yarn in the middle, and have the other thread end on the other side. Then what you're going to do is unthread your needle, and tie a knot around 
the middle piece here. And then to make sure it's extra tight, I want you to tie a second knot there. And you can get your adult to help you snip the loose, the extra thread. And there you go. You have your book. Hooray! All right, thank you so much, friends. I hope you had fun with your book. I encourage you to decorate all over the front and back of your newly made book. And of course, to fill the inside of the book with whatever you want to put inside. All right, I'll talk to you later, friends. Goodbye. Thank you all so much for crafting with us today. We would love to see what you made with your kit. So please feel free to share your project with us on social media using the hashtag MakeYourOwnStory. The Craft Along program is generously sponsored by the Library Trustees and the Friends of the Brookline Public Library. From all of us here at the library, we miss you and wish you happy making.